Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Today we're going to be talking about this spindle upgrade. So last night I did a really quick live YouTube video which incidentally I'll probably take down after this goes out because this will be more relevant than the video from last night but anyway. Um, the reason I did the live video was because my spindle had failed and I'd had a new one arrive from Amazon which I was pretty excited about because it's technically an upgrade. I was also really happy with the results and I'll talk through that a bit now. So the standard stock spindles run at around 9000 RPM and what that means is it rotates at about 9000 times per minute. The new one I'd ordered from Amazon rotates at about 20000 or 21000 RPM. So that means it's spinning at more than twice the rate of the standard stock spindles. So I'm just going to jump in there because I've missed a little bit of information out in the main video. No matter what the rating is of the spindle itself, whether it's a 9000 RPM or a 20,000 RPM, it's all relative to your spindle speed settings in the design software and your $1.30 signs in the GRBL settings. Those numbers need to align for it to send the correct power. So just to give you an example, if I want that to run at 20,000 RPM and I set the spindle speed in the design software at 20,000 RPM, the $1.30 sign within GRBL also needs to be at 20,000. Now, if I only want the spindle to run at half of the power and I change that to 10,000, then I don't need to adjust the $1.30 setting because it's already half of the value, so it will know to send half of the power. Hopefully that makes sense, let's get back to the main video. Now, what that means in relation to actually cutting and milling is because it's spinning twice as fast, it can therefore clear twice the amount of material or clear the material twice as fast. So in theory, you can then increase your feeds and speeds and cut much quicker. Now, anyone who's watched my tips and tricks video, and I'll put a link up in the corner, knows that the biggest no the biggest uh, reason these machines are noisy is the vibration off unbalanced motors. And that was my biggest concern. If this is running at twice the, the RPM, does that mean it's going to be twice as noisy and have twice the amount of vibration? And that's why I was really pleased, because it was actually quieter and better balanced than the stock spindle I had in the beginning. But as soon as the video went out, I had a load of questions come in on YouTube and other platforms asking about um, you know, fitting the spindle, uh, changing the carriage over, and also the relation of the new spindle to the electronics, the power supply unit and the control board. And I'll talk through those a little bit now. I am going to be probably be rambling a little bit because I'm doing this without notes as I'm going along, so please just bear with me. So the first question I'll answer is changing the spindle over. Now, the reason there's a bit of confusion about this is because often on the different forums and groups for CNCs, when people talk about upgrading their spindle, they're often going talking about you know physically something that is bigger, um, deeper, bigger diameter. And what that usually means is you need a bigger carriage to hold it. Now, in this case, we're just swapping a 775 motor out for another 775 motor. And what that means is the diameters of them are exactly the same. So it is literally a case of swapping them over. Undo the bolt, take the old one out, put the new one in, tighten it up, and connect the electrics back up. And this means because you're swapping the motors over so quickly, it's a simple upgrade. Now, the, the other type of upgrade, the bigger upgrade, when we're talking about things like a 500 watt spindle, is that you have to have a bigger carriage because they're a bigger diameter and they also weigh more. So it needs to be more sturdy. But in the case of swapping um, the old one out for the new one, it's a 775 for a 775. So you don't need any upgrades on the carriage. Now, the next set of questions that came in were about the electronics. And you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, because as I always say, I'm still learning. So comment below if you need to correct anything that I'm saying. Um, when we're talking about the electrics for these motors, you have to almost imagine, you know, the it's in a bit of a triangle, and the different numbers, whether it's the the voltage, the wattage, or the amperage, they they all kind of interlink, and one affects the other. And if you change one number, it can have an impact on the others. So I'll try and explain the best I can. Right, so the first questions that were coming in was about the voltage. 
Now I know my machine runs at 24 volts and what that means is the control board is running the spindle at 24, 24 volt output. Now they do vary. Most of the 3018s to my knowledge run at 24, but it can vary depending on what your control board is and what the different setups are. So the first thing is always check that. And that relates to what 775 motor you might purchase. So to my knowledge, these come in three different voltages, a 12 volt, 24 volt, and a 36 volt. Now, to make things more complicated, some are a, um, a fixed voltage, while others will allow a variable volt. Um, and what that means is, so the one I brought yesterday is a fixed 24 volt, and that means it's just rated at 24 volts. Now the variable ones means that they can be fitted to obviously multiple types of machine, but it does mean that the uh, speeds that they run at will vary in accordance to their voltage rating. So just to explain that, if that is a 24 volt running at 20,000 RPM and you fitted that to a 12 volt machine, because it's half the voltage, that probably means the RPM is going to be about half. So if you put that on a 12 volt machine, it will probably run at around 10,000 RPM. Um, you know, the same if you go up, if you installed it, if you um, put it onto a 36 volt, it will run even faster, but that's only if the spindle's rated up to that voltage. So it's just another thing to look at. If you're looking to buy another 775 motor, make sure it matches the voltage output of your control board. Now, there is a way around that. You can buy um, different voltage uh, motors and wire them up separately. And what you can do is buy a separate power pack and run the, run the spindle separately so you have to turn it on manually rather than having the control board control it. Now, I'm not a fan of that, it's just more work, but that's often what happens when people upgrade to bigger spindles is they will manually turn them on and off because the control boards can't handle the voltage going through them or actually the amperage needed to run them as well. And so now we'll move on to talking about amperage. So the amperage is, you know, if you imagine it's like a, a bit of a line graph is when you fire the spindle up, it will have like a big draw to get it up and running to its maximum speed. So it will spike and then it will level out a little bit. Now the draw on the standard stock spindles to my knowledge is somewhere around three or four amps. And what this means is the power supply unit um, for these machines often have a rating of five amps or under. So if, for example, like my setup, you start adding extra things to it, such as the lights and the extractions fan, this all starts adding to the amount of amps required to keep things running. And that's actually what I found out when I first did this. So because I added the lights, the extractor fan, it was trying to pull too much power through my supply unit and it ended up you know, causing it to fail. So what I did was upgraded the power supply unit as well to one of these and I'll put a link down in the description. But what this is, is it's a, uh, a different standalone power supply unit. To me, they're, they're a better supply unit because they've got an integrated fan, they keep cooler and you can also connect multiple things to it at the same time. But it also means that you can draw more power through it. So for example, because we've now gone up to a spindle that runs at a higher RPM, that spike and um, the line graph that I was talking about, if you imagine it, that's now even higher. So a standard stock spindle's drawing something like three or four um, amps, whereas that one may draw up to about seven or eight amps. So therefore, if you are looking to upgrade um, to that spindle that I'm using now, then you may want to consider changing your power pack over as well. This is about, I mean, this cost me about £15, so again, it's not expensive, and for the extra power you can draw through it, I think it's much safer to have one of these than the standard black, black bricks anyway. But again, you know, it's just all related. If you upgrade one, consider upgrading the other. The other element we have to consider is the control board itself. Now, the control board also will have an amperage rating. Um, and I think the Kronos maker that I've got on at the moment is around 10 amps, as in that's the maximum amount you should be drawing through it. Now, with the spindle running, the lights and the extractor fan, I'm probably getting pretty close to that. Hopefully I shouldn't go over it. But again, it's one reason, you know, to say just to look at some of these figures before you go ahead and just think, oh, I can upgrade everything together. 
you know if your if your setup is drawing too much that the board can handle you will fry your board the way around this is similar to what i just mentioned earlier is running the spindle separately from the power supply and turning it on manually and this minimizes the amount of amperage that the actual control board itself needs because if you imagine it that control board is not only supplying the spindle supplying the lights the extractor fan and also the stepper motors so as i say my setup at the moment is probably pushing the border limits of that Kronos maker. So hopefully that answers uh, the different questions that came up from the video you saw yesterday and you know as I say giving you a bit of extra knowledge as to you know don't just think you can drop the new spindle in without taking other things into consideration. What I'm going to do now is actually get on and do some tests with this new spindle and hopefully I should be able to you know get good results with it. So I'm going to put a little click clip up now um, of just doing a job that I've got to get out today so it's perfect timing for that. So with the job cut successful, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. I've not really pushed the feeds and speeds of that new motor yet because I just wanted to get it running for the uh, duration of a full job and see how it lasted. But I've got a bit of confidence in it, so I'm gonna start to push it soon and get some more tests done over the weekend. And all being well, I shouldn't have to order any more of these 775 modes for a while if that one is a bit more durable. Thank you very much for watching us. I any questions, please leave below. I love chatting to everyone. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and please subscribe to the channel. It always helps. I'll see everyone on the next video.